Hi everyone, hope you're keeping well. And in this week's video, I want to discuss a single tool that has dramatically improved your compositions. And I've brought you back to this sort of old farmhouse in the heart of Izmir region of Turkey. I've been here before, of course, and I did a video all about photographic abandoned locations. You can check that out, linked above. It's starting to get a bit worse for wear in here. So it'll probably be the last time I visit. And uh, people have started stealing the beams and the metal and the wood. It's always the case, it's pretty sad. Like for example, there's an archway missing just here, which is a bit sad. But let's crack on. We're losing light fast today, so I wanna get some images, improve on a composition I did previously, and also talk you through the tool that I'm referring to. tool that I'm discussing with you this week, of course, is the geared head. Now before, I've spoken about the differences between a ball head and a geared head. And a geared head has got three axis on it, and it's not to be confused at all with the pan head. I'm not going to explain all about it, how it works, and how to use it, and why it's better for this style of photography shortly. But I'm losing light, so I need to frame up get composition locked down, and then we can discuss it. Okay, so I've locked my camera down, it's all set and it's in position. And you'll see here that I'm using the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2. Now this isn't sponsored at all, of course. And there has been issues I've had with this particular geared head actually. Um, but I just wanted to discuss the purpose of geared heads, not necessarily this particular one. So this isn't a gear review more just kind of like how it operates and why it will assist me capturing images like this in interior photography. Now, of course, this is Arca Swiss, and you see me lock this down. It's just a simple rotate pin here. It's like the Arca Swiss mounted L bracket into the top here, and it works really, really well. The next thing we're gonna be looking to do is we could rotate our, we've got a little lever here on the right-hand side, and that just allows us to be able to do a kind of rotating motion, but only on the top section of the tripod. To be honest with you, for architecture, I barely touch this. I usually just get it in position, lock it down nice and firm, both of those in position, and we're kind of good to go. The three axes I do use, of course, is my pan, tilt, and my swivel here on the base of the tripod. You don't need to undo it much. You just need a subtle adjustment, and it can rotate like so. Now, this one's e easily done. Now, there is other ones you can get on the market that allow you to kind of do a, uh, all three axes are kind of like you turn them, geared increment movement across each three axis. But on this one, you don't have to do that. You, you just kind of, I wish you did have a kind of geared motion for this part, but you don't. But on the Benro one that I had previously, for example, you did. And I'll find a clip of that and show you what I mean. Okay, so next up, it would be my actual camera's position. Now, whenever I'm setting up a tripod for the first time, you know, setting up a composition for the first time, I'm normally getting the camera down, lock it down, lock down the tripod, get it nice and firm, which it is here. And then what I do is I usually stand off to one side and check the camera's orientation to the architecture. In other words, is, it, is the camera tilting slightly up, slightly down, off to the left, off to the right, whatever. Here, I can see the camera is positioned in such a way that it's actually tilting slightly upwards. So what we can do is we can actually, on this particular lever, we can actually use the gears here to move it ever so slightly, rotate this, and bring the camera's position down. So instead of it being up there, we're now down in this position. Works absolute treat. And that's pretty much how it works. There is also a lever on here as well for this particular brand, where you can do sort of quick movements like so, and it allows you to kind of rotate this and bring it back up very fast. And again, you've got another one over on this side as well, where you can do this kind of tilt, which to be honest with you, I've never really used um, in any sort of way. Really easy, live view's activated. I'm kind of gonna use this uh, locking pin here, undo that and I can just check that composition throughout and I wanna put it in there somewhere like this. Now the next thing I wanna do is, as I mentioned, is I wanna check with this particular axis, the actual tilt of the camera in this way. So if I, if I push down, it's gonna, if I rotate this barrel here to the right hand side, look, camera's pointing more down and if I bring it to the left, 
rotate it to the left, it's going to bring the camera back up, which is where I want it to be. I want it to sit more straight along this edge here. So that's what I've done. Now, you can actually then really fine tune this just with this slight adjustment and get it exactly right, locking down the composition from that particular axis. Next up, we're going to look at the actual tilt of the camera itself. And you can see right there, I don't know if you can see that or not, let's zoom right in, there's a red line running through my camera. So what you're looking at here is me just using the lever to adjust the level of the camera. And you can see the spirit level going green as it produces in camera a nice level image. So geared just refers to how the head actually moves. They work differently, they're stable. Without someone touching them, they will not move. And when you want to make an adjustment, the knob is geared directly to move the camera. Turn the appropriate knob left or right, the camera moves left and right. The knob is firm, so no accidental movements will happen, and it is geared at a ratio that allows a high degree of precision. So a large turn of the knob results in a small movement of the camera. The gearing ratio allows very precise movements, and once you stop adjusting the knob, the camera stays fixed in exactly that spot, as you just saw. Geared heads just make everything go so much smoother. I would find when using a ball head, for example, I would fuss with the angle, make several adjustments, and then just give up, only to fix things later in post-production, and of course, with great effort. I never knew if I had my composition just right, and I might have to crop to fix, a, say, a rotated or out of skew image. With geared heads, I just level the tripod, line up my composition, and I'm done, all in a few moments. And I barely need to correct anything at all in Lightroom or Photoshop. And used in tandem, like I'm doing here with the tilt shift lens, it gives a level of precision and efficiency that is tough to beat. And it reminds me of a 4x5 camera, and thus I find the geared tripod head indispensable as an architectural photographer. So of course a geared head like this is not a new product by any stretch of the imagination. I've had this one for two and a half years, it's the Sunway Photo as I mentioned and prior to that I had the Benro product for a few years as well since about 2017. So they've been around for a while but there's more competition than ever with these now and more people are using them and that's enabling us to get hold of them at a much lower price point than we've ever been able to do. So one of the other reasons why I don't like a ball head for this style of work is of course because when you unlock it, you're losing all three axes of your composition. A geared head doesn't work like that. So independent movement for each axis of your image enables you to be able to fine tune your composition and get it exactly where you want it. Different to a pan head, of course, a pan head you have to undo the handle and then rotate it yourself. Again, it works, but not in a geared manner. The way that this rotates and just slides your composition from left to right up or down and fine tunes it, it's perfection. When you're doing this kind of work, you want to take care of it. You want to make sure that you're slowing down. Use your LCD, use your grid lines in camera, and using a geared head like this one here can then enable you to be able to make sure that you're just fine tuning your compositions, and using the edges of your frame, the grid lines, with the lines in the architecture to frame things up nicely, slow down and lock down those compositions. They're pretty inexpensive these days, and paired with the right tripod legs, in other words, a nice solid pair of tripod legs, this is an amazing product to be able to get cleaner compositions as long as you're using live view in interior and architecture photography. It's pretty much all there is to say about them, to be honest. Okay, so the sun is starting to really go down now around me, and that is pretty much it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've got much more to come on this little road trip. As I was passing here, I thought I'd pop in and check out the condition. Giving you tips on using the geared head. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I think you'll agree it's the single most important tool in terms of from a tripod point of view to get better architecture and interior photography. Leave some comments if you've gotten below and until next time, yeah, hit subscribe, bell notification, you'll be alerted when I post next Tuesday. And until then, bye-bye for now.